Hey guys, welcome back to another tutorial. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to make these beautiful twinkling and shooting stars for backgrounds. So let's get right into it. To begin with, we're going to create a new composition, which I'm just going to call main. And I'm just going to leave it at relatively standard settings, so 1920 by 1080 at 24 frames a second. But you can always increase your frame rate and resolution dependent on your project. Next, we're going to create a new solid, which is going to serve as our background. I'll leave all of the colour codes that I've used down in the description, as well as a link to download this project file for free. Now that we have our new solid, I'm just going to rename it, and I'm just going to call this background. Next, I'm going to create a new adjustment layer, which I'm going to rename as well and call this one Static Stars. We're then going to add the Fractal Noise effect and preset to this. And we're going to change the blending mode from normal to add so that we can still see our background underneath it. Next, we need to make some adjustments to make this fractal noise look more like stars. So to begin with, we're going to increase the contrast a lot and bring it up to somewhere around 700. And then we're going to decrease the brightness and bring it into the minus 400 range, which is then going to mean that we can't see our fractal noise whatsoever. But to adjust for this, we're going to go into the sub settings and we're going to increase the sub influence until we can start to see all of these little fleckles and sparks that look like stars. We can also alter the subscaling, which is going to increase the scale and size of our stars. And playing with these four settings, as well as the complexity, we should be able to achieve the static star look that we want for our background. Okay, I've got a look that I'm pretty happy with here. So now it's time to make them twinkle. So we're going to select our static stars and hit Command or Control D to duplicate the layer. And we're then going to just rename it to call it Twinkling Stars. We're then going to go to the evolution keyframes in our fractal noise and we're going to option click the timer, which is going to open up our expression editor. We're then on a new line going to type in the expression time times 200. This is going to increase our evolution at 200 points per second. But as you can see, this is quite fast and I'm not a fan of this look. So I'm going to go into the expression editor again and I'm going to lower this number down to 100 and I'm going to see how that looks. Now 100 is still quite fast for me, so I'm actually going to decrease this down even more, but you can obviously play around with this setting as much as you like. So I'm going to try 65, and this looks like the perfect speed for me, but I can always come back and adjust this if I want them to twinkle faster or slower at any point in the composition. Now we have the stars flickering, but we need them to twinkle, so I'm just going to collapse this editor, and we're going to add the effect and preset glow to our adjustment layer here. Now we're going to increase the glow threshold and I'm going to bring this up to somewhere around 90% and we're going to increase the glow radius up to about 20. We're then going to increase the glow intensity and we're going to make this much more vibrant and bring it up to about 5 or 6. And as you can see now, some of the stars around our composition have got a nice aberration and glow around them, which as the stars grow and die from the evolution will slowly sparkle and then glow back down again which as you can see with our static stars from afar, looks absolutely beautiful. But it's time to add some shooting stars to this. To create our shooting stars, we first just need to deselect the twinkling stars layer that we've been working on, and select the pen tool, and then draw a quick diagonal line. We're then going to make sure that our stroke is pure white, and that we've increased it to about 4 or 5 pixels in width. We're then going to go into our shape layer and open it up, open up the contents, and open up our shape and then we're going to open up stroke one and then we're going to open up taper and we're going to increase the start length and the end length to 50% each. By doing this we've managed to taper off either end of our line so it now tapers in at the beginning and it bows in at the middle. Now we're just going to go back up and collapse all of these controls and then we're going to go to add and then we're going to add trim paths. We're going to open up the trim paths controls and we're going to hit the timer to create a keyframe for the end at the beginning and we're going to change this to 0%. We're then going to move about a second in and we're going to add another keyframe but this time at 100%. We're then going to select both of these keyframes and by hitting F9 on our keyboard we're going to easy ease them. We're then going to copy these keyframes and we're going to paste them onto our start controls but we're going to slightly delay them and offset them from the end. 
By doing this, we've managed to create the star going from one end of the line to the other. I'm just gonna trim down my viewing area so that I can see what's happening on the star animation. And as you can see, it doesn't look quite right yet. So we need to select these keyframes and go into the speed graph editor. Now we want our shooting star to be a lot faster and snappier, but we also still want it to fizzle out slowly at the end. To do this, we're just gonna pull both our start and end keyframes along a bit. So they're much faster during the beginning and middle of their duration, but they slowly taper off towards the end so that the star fizzles out. This looks pretty good to me so far, but I'm just gonna make a couple small adjustments to polish the look. And if you do want to see any of these small adjustments or variations that I have on these shooting stars, make sure to check out the project file in the description. Okay, after making some small tweaks to the speed graphs and as well as moving some of the keyframes around a bit, I've got a shooting star that I'm pretty happy with now. But it's important that this shooting star, like the twinkling stars, glow as well. So we're gonna apply the glow effect to this layer as well. And we're just gonna adjust the glow threshold and radius and intensity again but this time I'm gonna bump it all the way up to 100% and I'm gonna increase the glow radius drastically up to 30 to 40% as well as the glow intensity. And then I'm just gonna render it out and see how it looks. Okay, this is looking much better now. So let's see what it looks like within the rest of the scene. Okay, this shooting star looks great within our scene now. So now I'm just gonna trim it down so that the layer only takes the duration it needs to. And I'm gonna collapse the shape layers effects panel and I'm also gonna rename it to shooting star. Now you can duplicate these stars and add as many as you like at any point and change the size and scale of them through your composition. But before we do that, I'm gonna add a background light to this, which will really help bring the background to life. To do this, we're gonna create a new adjustment layer and we're gonna rename this as well and call this lighting. Now we're going to move this below all of our stars layers so it's just sat above our background and then we're going to find the CC glass effect in our effects and presets and we're going to apply it to this adjustment layer. We're then going to open up the surface tools and we're going to increase the softness drastically. I'm going to bring mine up to around 140 or so and then we're also going to increase the height as well and I'm going to bring mine up into the 80s. We're then going to open up the light tools and we're going to change it from a distant light to a point light. We're then going to drastically increase the light intensity as well and we're also going to change the light's height as well as the light's position and this sky looks quite pink to me so I need to balance it out so we're going to change the light color as well and to complement the deep purple background, I'm gonna light it with something like a light blue. And once I've added and decorated an extra few shooting stars around, we've got a beautiful backdrop now. Thanks for watching.